Hey programmers, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about this guy called event storming, which is usually a part of domain driven design. And by the way, I made a video a couple of days ago on exactly this topic. So this is a big prerequisite. Go watch that one first and then come back. Now, event storming is usually in the scope of domain driven design, but it doesn't have to be. For example, if you're doing domain driven design and you're building your app from scratch, you would have to do that, but you can also be assigned to a new team or new teams can simply be merged together. And in order to understand the application and all the processes within this application, a team may conduct a thing called event storming. Now, what is it exactly? We're gonna learn that now and dive deep and look at an example of an e-commerce store. Let's get started. All right, friends, so how does a usual event storming event is gonna look like? Well, very simple. Let's say we have developers, we have domain experts, product owners, and so on, right? So these people are gonna gather in a meeting room, like maybe 10 people, maybe nine people, and we're simply gonna take post-its, write things on the post-its, and go and put it on the wall, okay? All at the same time or one by one, doesn't matter. So brainstorming is the original word that the event storming is coming from, okay? So we're simply gonna put all the events that are known to us. And here you can see, different types of post-its, all right? It's very important to differentiate the colors for each post-it so that at the end, when we look at the board, we can know, for example, that these oranges are the ones, are basically events, for example, the purples are policies. And we're gonna talk about all of these. So these are all the post-its that you would need during the event storming session with your team, okay? So first, what we're gonna do is every person is gonna go and put events. So the events are basically domain events that are going to happen within your business. Now, in this example, this is a big example that we're gonna go over very quickly now, actually, and I will try to explain everything. Now, in this example, we're only looking at one area of this e-commerce platform that we have as an example, okay? We're looking specifically at the shopping cart, okay? So when the product gets added, when the product is removed, when the discount is applied, when the cart is emptied, when the shipping fees are applied, you know, when you uh, go to your shopping cart and you have items and you click next, you go to the summary page and so on. So what we're gonna do with our colleagues is put all these events. Why are we talking about events? And you probably noticed that all the verbs are in past tense. Well, this is important because this is bringing, giving us a structure that we can later build upon, okay? Let's say now we have all the events that we need for our shopping cart. And what is actually our end goal? Well, first of all, to understand the business, Second of all, to go from problem solving or from, from the problem space to the solution space, because this is a strategic design. Event storming belongs to the strategic design. And after mapping out all of these events and so on, and all these posts that we have here, we're gonna be able to jump into the tactical design, which is, for example, modeling your database, coming up with the dom domains and events and seeing your uh, boundaries, uh, bounded context clearly and so on. Okay, so now we'll have the events. Next thing is what we're gonna do, maybe within the same session in the office, but you can also split it into two, three days, right? Next thing is gonna be putting the actors and the comments. So what is an actor? Actor is basically the person who's gonna initiate this event. Okay, or the command rather. The actor is gonna initiate the command and the command is something that happens before the event. So in this case, a customer is gonna select the first product that they find on the when they look for a product and then the cart is automatically initialized. Okay, maybe it's not created because it's always there, but it's initialized. A customer can also add a product to the cart. Then a sim simply a new product is added. For example, we can also remove it or we can proceed to checkout while being in the shopping cart already. And then one command and one actor can actually trigger multiple events. For example, in this case, the shipping fees are gonna be applied. We're gonna check whether the shipping limit has reached. For example, in Amazon, when you go over 50 euros, for example, um, you're gonna be eligible for free shipping. And we're also gonna check for potential discounts at the same time. So all these three events can happen at the same time, but can also happen one after another. In our case, let's say they're happening at the same time. Okay, so they're happening at the same time. What I wanna try, try to say here is that uh, three different events can be triggered by one command. Just keep this in mind, okay? So the next stage that we're gonna come to is actually putting some policies. So 
But you probably watched my previous video on domain driven design where we looked at the code and we saw that we have uh, entities, okay? We have entities and uh, basically classes, let's say. And those classes can have some constraints that you can maybe put into the constructor of the class. And these are called, for example, policy. Meaning when we select our first product, we have to check whether the brand minimum rules apply. For example, there are some brands that allow you only to add two pairs of socks and not only one pair of sock, uh, just to cover their shipping costs or whatever. And then we can say in the website that sorry, but you actually need to select two pieces of socks because this is the rule of the brand. So at the same time, this is our constraint that is being checked after the command. Okay, this can also be in parallel, but basically they all depend on each other. Same story here. And maybe when we're checking out or proceeding to the checkout, we can first check the, for the taxes and apply discounts. So we cannot proceed before checking those policies. Okay, so remember that policies are constraints that we're also going to be, be using in our code literally. So if you don't believe me, go watch the previous video. It's going to be linked below. The next point will be adding hotspots. Hotspots are these red cards that also live within this flow. For example, a hotspot can be something that's vulnerable, something that can always go wrong, and it's always good to be aware of those. For example, our external API can have a failure. For example, the brand's API that we're gonna probably using here to check for the minimum, minimum rules can simply fail. Now, the question is, what do we do now? Do we let the user still buy the product and then figure out that, oops, the brand actually doesn't allow buying a single sock. What do we do then? So we need to come up with a plan. And this is for further brainstorming, not event storming. It's going to be up for the team, the product team. Okay, so what do we do next? The next stage would actually be finally putting all these events or all these things in a sequence. All right, now we were looking at them in one column. But actually, what makes more sense is that card first gets created, obviously, and then you can add a product. Of course, you can uh, debate that. Well, you can add a product, you can consider the card already created and then add a product because it's basically a derivative or of adding. So card getting created is a derivative of a product being added. But for example, this step has always has to come after the product has been added, you cannot go to shipping or proceed to checkout without having any products. So it will be like this first, this is happening, then this is happening. And then we're proceeding to checkout. All right. So just to just remember that there can be multiple uh, tasks here, and some of them can go in parallel. But in this case, let's say we even reduced our scope <laughs> to simply these three steps, even if we're looking specifically into the cart, shopping cart, and now we identified our sequence. All right, the next thing would actually be coming up with aggregates. Aggregates are basically things that all these three events we're going to be dealing with that they have in common. And if you look closely, what are these guys doing? Or where are these guys living? They're living within a cart. Cart is basically the keyword that's going to appear over and over again. And why do we need to come up with an aggregate? Like what is it helping us? Well, again, aggregates are going to help us with defining our entities and our value objects when the thing code because a, an aggregate can contain multiple entities. So without going deep, I can already say that, for example, the cart is going to be the aggregate, but there's also going to be a cart entity, there's also going to be a product entity, not maybe within this bounded context, but within another one, there's also going to be a, a shipping fee value object, there's also going to be a discount entity, and so on. All right, you're going to learn all of that in the previous video if you go and watch it. Well, the next point, or the next step rather, is going to be to actually identify these guys. Now, what are these guys where you can go up and see that these were aggregates, these guys in the black posts are query models, and the green ones are external systems. Now, what are query models? Query models are just bear with me, I'm gonna go here. Yeah, query models are the type of the data that you're gonna need for your aggregate or your event to function. So for example, in this case, we're going to need the product data every time the 
product is added, we're gonna need the product data, meaning we're gonna fetch some additional information, like what which product has been added actually. For the brand rules, we're gonna need them here to check for the for the policies, okay? Geolocation, we will need this to apply the shipping fees, for example, to see how far the customer is. Discount is gonna be needed here to discount discount data. And uh, for example, taxes are gonna be here. Now, you and your colleagues are gonna sit and for example, if you're using JavaScript or TypeScript, you're gonna create all the interfaces, interfaces and types for all these uh, thingies here. And now it's even better because now you have an overview of all the external APIs. For example, the brand API is gonna go here. So it's just good to have a good over, uh, an overview of them. The tax data is gonna go to the government financial API. The coupons are gonna be, coupon API is gonna be here. Geolocation is gonna go here. So these are all our, these things are basically third party APIs that we don't have control over. And if you have an overview of them, you're gonna be able to plan better because remember this hops hotspot with external failure, this is directly connected to this brand API. So all of these guys can fail and you need to, need to be aware of that. Next, what we want to do is actually, now this is very rudimental, I just put some arrows there, but the next one is actually defining the business flows. Business flow means looking at this step, for example, cart created, and defining what exactly we're gonna need here. So the first thing is gonna be fetching the product data, okay? This is one business flow. Uh, within this step, we're also gonna check for the brand minimum rules. Let me actually revert that. This, is, has, this has to be checked after the product data has been fetched, and so on. So now, let me make it red. Uh, to see it, to visualize it better. This is gonna be one business rule here or business flow here. And this is something that we will probably be able to, um, if we're developing the application from scratch, uh, create a feature for, okay? So the next one could be uh, with the discounts and so on. So there might be one or multiple business flow. Actually, there are gonna be many business flows. Let's talk about the bounded context, okay? And subdomains and so on. So I, as I'm, mentioned earlier, we're only looking into one bounded context, which is the shipping or, or a shipping cart, sorry, not shipping cart, shopping cart. All right. And uh, we can already see that there are multiple bounded contexts, for example, search, because how otherwise are we going to stumble upon some kind of a product? So search can be another bounded context and a shopping cart can be another bounded context. So this whole thing would be a bounded context and you can identify the domains from them. And one of those, those domains will be a core domain, now they're gonna be a subdomain and so on. All, this, all of this you can learn in the previous video. And after you've, you're finished with that event storming, okay, you can actually look at these data queries, the external APIs and start modeling your database and your code more efficiently. You can, you know what your entities are, what your value objects are, for example, something from here, and you can basically proceed to the solution space, which is the tactical design. Okay, again, guys, if you liked the video, smash like, subscribe. This is really gonna help my channel to grow so that more developers like you watch this channel. And this is simply a joy for me to share all this knowledge with you. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.